Hey, what's up guys? So this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to make an 80 style grid. This is just my method. I know there's a bunch of different methods to do it, but uh, this is just the way I like to do it. So I figured I'd share it. Uh, I'm going to start off by deleting this cube. And if you want to see what I'm doing with commands, you can look at the bottom left right here. So I deleted the cube. And now, actually I'm going to change it to cycles first thing. And then I'm going to make my plane now which is going to become our grid so I'm going to hit shift A and it's the top selection on mesh and plane so now you can uh, press 0 to go into the camera and if you hit shift F you can move around with uh, WASD and also with the mouse too so I'm just going to position it um, parallel to the grid for now but you could put it any way you want to be honest you know it doesn't really matter but I'm using uh, WAC and ND to, to move around right now so I'm going to set it to about right here hit left click to stop and then I'm going to hit S to scale it up now I think the goal would be to try to get the grid out of the camera and have a little extra so that if you do move over you know pan really far left or right forward you won't get to the point where the grid's not showing or maybe that's what you want but you know if you want it just to be the grid in the scene I'd leave a little extra just thinking you know just to be safe um, but it's really fast to make so I wouldn't be too worried about it you can always scale it up so let me uh, jump into the next step and that would be to go into edit mode you can hit tab and now I'm going to hit W and the top selection will be subdivide that's what you gotta do not subdivide smooth just regular subdivide and then I'm gonna add maybe about 10 cuts but whatever is happening right here this is gonna be your grid so now if it's at 10 cuts and I hit W and subdivide again it's gonna double it so there you see it double that grid again so maybe this is a little too big what I would tend to do is make it a bit smaller just because you can scale it up and uh, it's easier to have a bigger platform than a smaller one depending on what you're doing um, but you know from what I've seen this is what most people are doing so I'm gonna hit subdivide a third time and now you see I got my grid which is not a grid yet but it will be in one second so okay now say you're happy with this you'll hit tab again get out of edit mode and you'll see now it's just it's just a flat plane so, for the sake of the video, I'm just going to add a simple black background. So, if you click on this world tab, go to use nodes, you can just click here and make it dark. Alright, now you already have the plane selected, so you're going to go to the materials area, which is, uh, actually, yeah, right here, this one, and then hit new. And then I'm just going to choose a mission for now okay so I'm gonna add a synth wavy color for the meantime Let's see like this for now and if we go back to rendered you see it's just that okay so what you're gonna do now is you're gonna hit this wrench and add a modifier and it's gonna be in the generate area and it's all the way at the bottom and it's wireframe so okay as soon as you do that See what happens. I'm gonna go back to solid mode so you can see what what it looks like in the beginning. But uh, yeah, this is what we got so far. So right away you can see it's not a grid, but if you go over here to the thickness area and you click in the middle of it with the left click in the middle of it and then turn to the left or to the right and make it bigger, you'll start to see you start getting your grid. So you could hit apply and leave it how you want it, but I'd, what I'd like to mention is that you could actually leave it open because if you didn't know everything in Blender can be animated so you know you could maybe have it pulsing out to the beat or something like that you know depending on what kind of animation you're doing but I've figured most of it's for music videos so so you see if I hit I right now it actually inserted a keyframe you know and then I could go over here and then make it thicker insert another keyframe and then uh play it back and now you see the grid slowly starting getting bigger 
So there are some advantages to not applying it. You might want to apply it sometimes just to get the, you know, get the mess out of the way, but in this case I would just leave it. So I'm actually just going to control Z. I'm a big fan of control Z. Just get all those keyframes that I put in out and maybe I'll make this grid a little bigger for the meantime. Okay. So now if we go back to rendered, you'll see that we have a grid but you can tell it's solid color so if you don't really want that there's a simple solution to that and I would just pull down this screen right here if you do that this little uh, thing in the corner pull that down and make a new window and then you come to the left bottom left corner of this window and then you go to note editor so uh, the simplest way the easiest way is you just add a glass shader and then you mix them so I'm gonna go I just added a glass I'm sorry you hit shift A to open this uh, original glass shader and we hit shift A again to open the mix shader which is right here so now what you can do is you just put it right there for now and now just the emissions in there so you, now you plug in the the glass one so the IOR is actually the the clarity of the glass so the lower you go the more transparent it will be as you start to see and then this is the the mix between the emission and the glass shader so so yeah if we zoom in now you can see this grid looks more like see-through which could be more appealing than flat in my opinion so now looking over here you can kind of the grid has more definition if you make it bigger as opposed to just having the glass I mean the emission shader okay so that's one way that's the way I usually make my grid so say I wasn't happy with this uh, this size of the, the squares I could just scale it up right now let me see I think I might have moved up a little bit but um oh no it still stays Sorry about that, but yeah, um, yeah, you could just scale it up if you want the squares to be bigger now. So I think this one gives you a little more freedom, and then uh, you can also animate the the thickness of your grid. Um, what else would you do? Oh, this is oh yeah, that's the last thing I wanted to mention is that this this is the more intense version of that glass and emission shader. So if we were to render the last frame, the last wireframe uh, grid, there's no way it's going to look like that. And the reason being is because when I click on it, now the nodes come up, you'll see there's a lot more going on. So it's the same glass and emission shader going on over here, but there's a, I got a Fresnel node and then a light path, which I think is um, the main thing that's going to help you out in this because if you take this off the geometry it's still not that bad but um, yeah and then, then you can actually also still even add um, some displacement micro displacement but I think for a simply that would be way over <coughs> depending but uh, yeah this is the more intense one and actually what I'll do is I'll just I'm going to pause on this for a few seconds, so if you want, you guys can just screenshot this. Let me minimize this, because this is actually a pretty good, um, this is a really good shader for the synth wave. And I lowered the IOR tad, but um, yeah, you could bring that back up, and then you can see now, what this is what the IOR does, it just changes the transparency. So, you see how one, it disappears. But I liked it, yeah, just like barely, barely there. So yeah, I'm sure there's a lot more things you could even do. I'm not the best with nodes. Um, I actually looked up, uh, what did I look up? Uh, I looked up, I looked up emission shaders in the Google search. Blender emission shaders, and actually this, someone had already put this up. 
so um, yeah, I just copied it over. So I'm not uh, taking any credit for this shader, but um, everything else is mine. <laughs> this palm tree. So, um, but I think Blender people aren't going to be too worried about that. So that's the whole point. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, shows you how to make your grid. Now feel free to do whatever you want with it. Uh, I notice a lot of people go, for, you know, parallel, but I think a diagonal could be cool or just think outside the box. So, uh, yeah, I hope this helped out. I hope to be doing um, specific tutorials kind of geared towards synthwave animations because I'm currently making a lot of that music and uh, just figured that's what I'm into, that's what I'm going to do. So, uh, hope you guys like this. Uh, Till the next one. Thank you.